Hey everybody, welcome to this week's topic of heating, ventilating, and air conditioning, uh, HVAC for short. And this is a very important part of building science. And there's a lot of information out there for this on the web. And I thought that I would just give you a little bit of a glimpse into some of the topics that we need to talk about to discuss in the HVAC world. So here's the table of contents for the day. We're going to talk about different kinds of systems. Um, generally, a lot of people have central forced air systems, and that requires some air handling units in the house, in the whatever kind of a building that you're in. There are also hot water systems and zone systems, and you can see the other topics that we're going to talk uh, going to talk about today. So first thing is. There's a couple of different types of systems. There's a central forced air system. That's what most modern houses are using a type of this system where there is a coil and that coil either has uh, cold fluids in a coil inside of it and then air passes over top of that. There are also ones that work in the opposite direction where there's a coil inside of it that has hot gases or hot fluids inside of it inside that coil and air passes over top of that and that's what creates your hot or cold air inside of a building. We're going to talk more about that in a little bit. The other ways that are popular and some of them are a little bit older systems and some of them are for different uses is a, a hot water system and then a zone control system where the zone is a an individual part of a bigger system and then there's this thing called radiant heat which we'll, also, which we'll also talk about. So a central forced air system, the most common type of HVA system and again it's circulating air through and uh, through and around that heating and cooling devices. The biggest thing of this is that the air is forced into a duct and it's blown throughout the building and uh, I had sort of talked about this before, but the supply duct is where that conditioned air comes into the building through a diffuser or a supply register. And then the air also needs to come back through this. This is like a closed loop system throughout your house. And uh, it's what we call the conditioned space. And that air is coming back into the system through what's called a return duct. Now, this is very common across most of the United States, especially houses that have been built since, I would say, like the average of 1950 on um, were, used, were using some type of a um, forced air system. Now, it might not be air conditioning, it might not be cooling of the house, but most houses use this type for heating uh, very commonly. So as part of this, there's this thing called the air handling unit, AHU. And this is the part that's used to do that circulation. It has a, it's a basically a large metal box. It has a blower, heating and cooling elements, filter, sound attenuator sometimes, depends on if it's kind of like inside the space or it can be put in the basement a lot of times. Sometimes it can be even put up in the attic. And it connects to all that ductwork that distributes the air throughout the building and then returns it back through that AHU again. So more parts of this, what you need to go to that air handler is some sort of a supply of the heating and again, most modern places use a cooling or both. Uh, something to generate heat. You are going to need some sort of a fuel oil or natural gas or propane heater that will quite literally light a fire inside your house and then that fire heats up uh, the air or cooling uh, or, or uh, through a coil and then that actually creates the heat for the system. There is an electric heating element, which is the easiest way to explain that is think of a giant toaster. Um, unfortunately, electric heating elements are really, really inefficient. So the transfer of energy from electricity to making heat is really, really inefficient. So that's not typically used except for as a backup for maybe another system. The one that I'm going to talk about a lot today, um, and we see in some of the other videos that I'm going to link 
as reference material is the heat pump. And a heat pump is a very efficient way to do things because it's basically an air conditioner that works backwards. Uh, again, the refrigeration system, which can make that heat, uh, take away the heat, it absorbs the heat, is the air conditioner or a heat pump unit. So, smaller air handlers, they might actually have the fuel burning system in place. Larger commercial air handling units contain coils that circulate air, uh, excuse me, circulate water. And that comes from either a boiler that's making a hot water or a steam system or a chiller that's providing cold water. Now, into the air handler unit yourself, itself, I'm actually going to take a backwards approach through this because I think it makes a little bit more sense to come from the return air. So somewhere inside the building are all of these return air ducts, and they are all linking down into this area. So this is the return and fresh air duct number six here. So then we're moving to the left hand side. Number five is a filter compartment somewhere. You're going to have to make sure that you try and eliminate dust and pet dander and all the other stuff that sort of just gets sucked in through the building. Number four is where the heating and cooling coil is. And again, this is a literal, you can think of it like the radiator in a car where you are running fluid through a coil back and forth and back and forth and air is passing over top of that unit. Number three, and this one is a flexible connection because number two is the fan compartment. So you can imagine that the fan compartment is going to be making a little bit of uh, mechanical noise and bouncing and movement from the fan actually spinning. So this little flexible connector actually helps to dampen some of the sound and some of the energy that moves in that um, from the coil, which you don't want to have broken connections or anything like that. And then number one is where the conditioned air, now either heated or cooled, will be moving as a supply. So that goes out to the rest of the building to go through the registers of the building. So other ways to do this. In older houses, houses from the 1800s on up to the 1920s, 30s, 40s, and then again in the 50s is where this sort of, sort of started to go away a little bit more, um, is a hot water system. Water can be heated in a boiler and circulated throughout the pipes to radiators throughout the building. It requires plumbing rather than ductwork, so you're not blowing air around the building, you're blowing uh you're you're moving hot water around the building and that's what changes the temperature in the room so the hot water comes up or steam comes up into this system goes through these uh, radiator fins here and then radiates literally radiates heat out into the room a zone control system is something where you have one heater and thermostat per room there's no duct work because it's usually just a single unit that's tucked into that room. So the return is on the bottom usually, and then the supply is up on the top. And this is oftentimes used in hotel rooms. And a zone control system uh, across a big area like a hotel would then connect back down to one big system uh, similar to those photos that we saw earlier where it was a big commercial system where there would be a chiller or a boiler or uh, something that's generating the heat, and then that would just supply all those different rooms throughout the building so that they would have fewer pipes to run, but then inside each room the unit itself can call for heat or call for cool, and it's just using one of those two sets of pipes to make that liquid flow through the system. Last one is a radiant heat type of a, a system. And these are really um, a nice way to go because you can put them into a floor, a wall, a ceiling, and it's a very gentle and uh, type of heat where you're using hot water pipes or electric heating element running through that building component. The heat is transferred directly from the hot surface to the people in the object. So you can make a room feel warmer by having 
um, warm floor right underneath your feet, and you might not actually have to warm the the air up in the room. This is a theory of two different types of how you can heat a space. You can heat the air in the space, or you can heat the objects in the space, and they are different types of do different types of ways of doing things. And this is a rather efficient way to do it because once you put that heat into, say, like a concrete floor like pictured here, that concrete floor will also hold on to the heat. So you can stop the electric element or hot water flowing through and then it retains the heat in that concrete because the concrete acts like a giant heat sink to hold on to all that heat for a while. Now we talked about uh, the basics of a heat pump before. And a heat pump is uh, this machine or device that moves heat from one location, the source, to another location, which is the mechanical work, or from inside to outside, or uh, in the case of a uh, air conditioning cycle, it would move the hot air from the inside of the building to the outside. It can produce that heating or cooling by reversing the direction of the flow, and it can be used with forced air system, so it's blowing air around and then it blows air over a coil. It can be used in a hot water system where you are heating and cooling the water in a system and then letting that um, be part of a system and it can also work with the radiant heat system. It's a really efficient way to work and uh, there are some units that can get temperatures down to negative 34 degrees where it's actually pulling every little tiny bit of heat energy that is in a very, very cold environment and trying to bring that back inside and um, able to heat a building inside like that. So I wanted to show you just a couple of pictures of what HVAC plans might look like. And uh, this is a basically like the inside of a doctor's office. So this is a commercial space that we're looking at here, and I'm going to click to the next slide so you can see some highlighted spaces. In this one, the green ducts are the supply ducts. So they are what is supplying air into the room, and then they're, uh, and they're listed there with the amount of CFM, that's cubic feet per minute, that will be able to flow through those units. And you can see that there's some variability between these because you're looking at different sized rooms and there might also be different purposes to those rooms. So as part of a real true design plan, an architect or a mechanical um, contractor will need to understand how that room is going to be used, what equipment goes into that room. They will also need to know the amount of insulation, the amount of windows, even the orientation of the room. If the room is on a south side facing part of the building, that in the northern hemisphere here, you're going to get sun all day long on that wall. So you're going to need to heat or cool that, that room differently depending on what side of the building it's on. So the green, again, are the supply ducts. The red is the air handling unit. Let me go backwards there. And the blue are the returns. So you can see R1, R2, R1. Those are different styles of returns that are being put into those rooms. And you do see a number right here, a 20 by 12. That's the size of the duct that they are using for that return. So this is the... Um, the air handling portion here, and this would be covering the heating and or cooling of each of these rooms. By the, by the amount of information that I have here, I'm supposing that this would be a heating and cooling system because if there's a single air handling unit and that's covering the supply and the return in each of those rooms. Now, when we go down to this one, this is a little bit different. Again, I said that this was a doctor's office so they have different um, rooms where they might need ventilation. So the yellow here are vents. And you can see some information about these vents, about what they need to do. Each one of these vents is a 75 CFM, again, cubic feet per minute. 
it's going to move 75. If you think of like a one foot by one foot cube, it's going to move 75 of those boxes per minute with the amount of air that it's going to suck out of here. So these rooms might be bathrooms. They might be internal um, like lab stations where they might be doing work where they need to exhaust air out. I'm not exactly sure of the purpose again of what these units are doing, but there's you can see four different lines here um, for how these ventilation uh, sections are, are leaving the building. So anyway, that's our quick run through of a couple of bits of information about the HVAC heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. And again, we went over types of systems. We talked about central forced air systems, hot water, zoned, radiant heat, heat pump, and then we took a look at some plants. So I hope this was informational for you, and uh, let me know if you need any other um, information about this, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks.